I'm Rob. For this video, I'm going to start with this PDF piece of sheet music and go for the full build process, start to finish, and end up with this wonderful piece of wall art. For this project, I'll start with importing the PDF into vCard Pro. From there, I'll create the toolpaths that the CNC will actually use to cut the project. On the CNC, I will prep the wood, carve the music, then I'll use my painting and finishing technique to complete the project. Let's talk about importing PDFs into vCarve. Not all PDFs are created equal. Some will import in perfect and you don't need to edit them. You can cut great. Uh, I'll do a quick example. I did a plaque for my brother-in-law when he had his case, he's a lawyer, he had his, had his case go in front of the Supreme Court and that's kind of a big deal. So I made a, a plaque from that and here's the PDF. And imported there. Let's make this a little bigger. If I had to go to the make the tool paths right now, this would carve great. And as a matter of fact, it did. In fact, I'll probably insert a picture around here when I'm done doing this video recording. But it came out very nice. It was one of the first PDFs I did to import and use this technique I use for cutting. And I have to say it came out nearly perfect. I was very happy with this one. So, like I say, some PDFs work great. When you often import music in with a PDF, it'll come in like this, which when you first look at it, it looks fine. But notice how this is just a straight line. That is an open vector. It's not, a, it's not closed, it's not a, like a box. Or this is a circle. I can tell us to carve this in vCarve it'll carve inside the circle. It can't carve inside a straight line. Let me show you my finished product and show you kind of what I'm talking about. So here's the finished product. So when it carves, it'll carve between these lines here. So go over the tool paths real quick. I'm getting out of order, but that's okay. So here's what's gonna carve inside those lines. Those are closed vectors, and it'll carve what we see right there. That's the goal we're trying to get to. But when you just import a straight PDF, you can't do that. It doesn't work right. I tried a few other things. I used an online converter, uh, Zemzar, which did pretty good for what I ended up using. I did quite a few and tried to import the PDF and then convert to, I tried converting to DXF. To my document type. Actually, I went to SVG, because that's, again, that's a, uh, a vectorized file. I got about the same result as I did with the importing the PDF straight. Actually, it's worse yet. It's only open vectors now, only the lines, which you can't, I guess I shouldn't say only, there's a closed vector there. But the majority of this is not at all what we're looking for. It, it can't, we don't want to carve on top of lines, we're going to carve inside closed boxes, shapes like that. This text worked fine. That's funny, but over here where the text had the, his, the composer's name, that didn't come through at all. So again, two fails now so far. We can't import straight PDF for music. We can't import the SVG converted. I tried multiple online converters. This is not the only one I tried. I tried five or six. Every one of them did, well, some of them just failed completely, it aired out. But the ones that did work, I saw the similar things like that. So I ended up using this one, but instead of converting to that, uh, to SVG, I went to a JPEG. Too many options here, it's not a document. I went to JPEG, and that worked quite well. In fact, that's what we imported over here. Go back to the file. So this is what came through when I imported the JPEG. And this is the JPEG. There is some pixelation if you zoom in a long ways, but this is so small in the end, you will not see any pixelation. In hindsight, 
I should have, well, let's convert this first. I'll show what I'm talking about. I won't convert it. I've already done that. I'm just going to show you what happened. Well, I will show you. To convert a JPEG or any kind of uh, raster file, a pixelated file, to convert it to the vectors we need, we go to trace bitmap. For a clean file that is black and white like this, it does very well. Once you start messing with multiple colors, it has problems. But something like this, it does a great job. I, I'm playing with vector. I'm just going to default on all these. It does very well with the default settings. I changed them around quite a bit and got the exact same, if not very, very, very similar results. So I'm going to preview and apply and close. So let's hide the bitmap layer. And here's the actual converted vector files. When you zoom in, you can see it's not perfect. Some of these things have rounded a few edges. Once we get to the size, when you actually see it when it's cut, it's going to look perfect. In hindsight, if I did this again, I would probably use the PDF version of the text, because that is perfect. So I'd copy this part, or save that part, and go to the music, and delete this part to combine the two, two areas. I didn't do that. I got great results without doing that. But being the perfectionist, next time I'll probably use a combination of PDF and the bitmap. So here's the actual one I ended up with. Now let's look at the toolpaths. I just have four basic toolpaths. The first one is just simply to skim that. I probably mentioned before that having a perfectly flat surface to start with is so important when v-carving. If it's not level, it will come out some parts darker, some parts lighter, just not consistent. The big deal, the most important part, is the v-carving. I've got a 45 degree little eighth inch bit I'm probably going to switch a 30 degree bit in the future. I have a bunch of these 45s I'm almost done with now, but I've always used those. They've done great. I think a 30 bit might actually be a little better. For a flat depth, I'm going 0.02 deep or 20 thousandths deep. I'm actually adding an extra 5 thousandths depth to that. Uh, hard to explain. Basically, all you're doing is lowering the starting depth of the bit 5 thousandths. But I can do a good simulation of that. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to set this to 0 for simulation. Recalculate. Okay, let's go to, oops, it's not quite done yet. Go to 3D, reset, and preview. I'm going to zoom into something that's got really high detail on it. So let's look at these areas right here. Notice the, the uncut part here. That's what I'm looking at. So that's with nothing. Let's go to 05 or 5 thousandths. We'll see how that changes it. Because it's cutting deeper, the V-bit is going to cut wider, so that gap's going to be a little less. And I'll just preview again, and I can't see much. Let's go a little more. Let's go 100 or 10 thousandths. And preview again. Getting slimmer and slimmer. And just for giggles, go 0 0.02, just to show what happens there. It's only an extra hundredth of an inch, which when you think about it, a hundredth of an inch is not much. But pretty soon we're going to lose all the clear on that at all. It'll just be black. Oops, reset. And there we go. We've lost all that. So only a hundredth of an inch makes a big difference there. So it's also important when you reset, when you set your height on your Z when you're carving. In fact, I often go a smidge high and start carving and look at it. And I'll keep just nudging it down until I feel it's a good cut. So in the end, let me change that back to where it was. So I'll keep just dropping a few thousands till I'm happy with the way it looks. 
And in the end, you have to use a little bit of art here. It's not just pure science. You've got to use your judgment when you're actually cutting. And don't let the computer do all the work. OK, back to the way it was. So again, let's look at that again. 5,000 starting depth and 200s or 20,000s depth. Um, one other thing I want to talk about here. Let's go to setup. I've only got a tenth of an inch clearance set here. And because there are so many individual steps here, there's a lot of going up and down and up and down where it's not actually cutting. If you have that set to a half an inch or even more, it's going to spend forever just going up and down, not actually doing any cutting. So that will speed up your cut time quite a bit. And speaking of that, let's look at this too. I have a plunge rate of 70, which is usually default is like 30 for a lot of these things. Again, I'm only going 25 thousandths depth. So it's not like we need a lot of slow down the speed when it's plunging because it's only going a fraction of an inch down. So I bumped that up too. If you have that set for 30 and you have your height set a half an inch for you're doing your passes for the setup for your clearance, I bet you would add half an hour to the time on this one. This is a long cut anyway. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, this is a two hour cut. And I think I beat that by a few moments. It was right around two hours when I cut this. So, so you can save quite a bit of time by tweaking those little settings there. And then to the rest, I did a, a chamfer just around the edge, uh, 60 degree V bit, went up like a third, 0.35 inch depth, just gives a nice edge on it. And then of course the cutout, which is about as simple as it gets. It's uh, the thickness of what is 875. So I went an extra five thousandths to cut through and some tabs. And I have a ramped cut. So let's take a look at that full simulation. And there we go. So you can see there's a little bit of a chamfer there, not a lot. The preview doesn't show it how much it really is, but and we'll go from there. Okay, I think it's time to go out to the CNC and start actually cutting. For the first tool path, all we're doing is skimming. I'm using a half inch end mill and taking off only a few thousands, just to skim it, get, make sure it's nice and level. It's all we really care about at this point. This next step is something new for me. I've used some epoxy in the past for projects, but not quite in this way. I'm trying to, first of all, use this as a grain filler, get a much smoother texture on the surface. Uh, the next step would be to penetrate in the wood, and that way, when we've carved into this and paint, it should not bleed through the carved area, any paint bleed. And also, it should make the surface of the wood a little stronger, so when we're carving, hopefully it'll be less chip out. So hopefully that's uh, the results. We'll find out. If it doesn't work, I don't think it's going to hurt anything in the end anyway, so it might be a wasted step, but certainly I don't think it's going to hurt anything. After waiting three hours for it to cure, like the instruction said, I'm doing a light sanding over it. It cured completely. It dusts up great, it's not sticking to the pad, uh, and it's giving us nice smooth finish. The grain filling properties have worked just like they should have. I probably didn't need to sand it this far down, but uh, what the heck, a little extra sanding is better than not enough. If you watched any of my previous videos on my alternative to aura mask painting technique, uh, this is old news to you. But for newbies, I'm putting a layer of plastic wood down on top of this. We'll let it cure and go on to the carving step next. And here's a quick shot of the 45 degree V bit I'm using to carve the text. And now to the exciting part. We're actually carving the music and text into the board. I sped this way up. This step took approximately two hours, and I've condensed it down to 30 seconds of video. 
I'm not sure it's worth watching or not. If you like watching this, feel free. But if you want to zoom through the next few seconds of this, I won't be offended at all. I use Linux CNC to control my CNC machine, and here's the screen while we're actually doing the cutting. You can see it doing different toolpaths, where it's actually cutting. The dot is the router bit, where it's cutting. Uh, if you look in the upper corner, you can see the X, Y, Z coordinates. And now here's each line of code zooming pi. Back to your old high school math, X, Y, and Z. It's just going from point to point to point, X, Y, and Z. And here are a few still shots of the board after the V-carving. You can see it has pretty good definition. I'm pretty happy at this point. For paint, I'm using plain old black acrylic paint. Nice and thick. Don't water it down, even though you might be tempted to, to go in the cracks and crevices easier. Thick is best. It will not bleed then. You don't want any bleed. And don't go chintzy on the paint. I put a lot of paint on here, don't worry, it'll sand off later with no problems. Let it dry, put a second coat on if any spots look like I need it. For the sanding portion of this video, I kept it at real time, at least for the first part. That sander takes off that filler so fast, and it leaves the great painted area nice, super sharp lines. It's it is a very good technique. I just love this technique. I do have a vacuum hose on this, so it gets rid of a lot of the dust. If you don't have a vacuum hose, it will press some of the, the dust into the joints. You'll have to use a wire brush to get it out of those joints. Not a big deal in the end, but the hose makes it that much better. There are a few areas I want to touch up. I'm using my Dremel with some sanding discs. You can see there, I hope the definition comes through in the video, there are a few spots where the black covered up the lines on the music and just a little touch up and suddenly you can see the exposed wood. I'll do some tighter shots later if the video doesn't do it justice. And that's all it takes. And here's some shots, the finished item. For finish, I use General Finishes Wipe On Armor Seal. I put on five or six coats. I either lightly sanded or used a buffing pad between coats to get it nice and smooth. You can see I put a penny there to show how good the definition is and how small the text really is. Get a real world perspective of it. And I want to talk a few minutes about why I chose this piece to do. Uh, Jared Tate is actually a pretty well-known composer nowadays. I went to high school with him. His older brother was one of my best friends through high school, college. We were both drummers in high school band, college band. Uh, we were roommates for a while in college. Jared is uh, his little brother, of course, and even then when he was younger, we knew he was uh, quite the musician and would have a career in music. Jared even played piano at my wedding back in the mid-'80s, so I can claim a famous composer performed at my wedding. This specific piece of music is a timpani solo, and back when I was younger, I was quite a timpanist. That was my specialty in the percussion field. I'll go ahead and put a link to someone performing this piece of music on timpani in the notes for this video. And I'll also put a link to Jared's Wikipedia page so you can read more about him if you're curious. To those of you that actually made it this far in the video, I really want to say thank you. I do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.